Frozen Spears. Oh. We are Flake Rose and Spears, and we are supremely black. Dropping content that matters. How y'all doing this week, fellas? Man, doing doing good. A little bit of frustration this week, though. A uh, little happiness and frustration. I was able to – I got me two shows in this weekend. Did my first show in West Tennessee in a long time since we've been shut down. Had a great time going out there to the country, bringing laughs. Uh, to them folks, uh, I ain't been out to the comedy clubs called South Street. I ain't been out there in a while uh, since they moved. Uh, but I got to go out there again, had a good time uh, with those guys. The frustrating part was I had just got my car out the shop the day before I went down there, and it would not make it back home. I had to leave it in West Tennessee. Damn. Yeah. So my car in West Tennessee uh, – and had my pops had to meet my wife halfway for me to make it back to Nashville. So, so that's real frustrating right there. I got to go back down there this weekend, and uh, I'm gonna get one of them U-Haul, the little U-Haul towing kit thing, and just tow it back on the U-Haul joint. That's tough. So they said they'd take care of me though. They said they said if it's something we did, we'll we you know we're gonna fix it for free, and we'll discuss the towing. You know, what I'm saying we'll probably get that money back also. So. Why well, I thought you was playing, man. No, nah, I was dead serious. Uh, I thought you, because I had looked at my phone just like a little bit over the weekend. I've been trying to disconnect from that. But I was like, oh, okay, I think he playing. So I need, I guess I need to go back and look at some messages where you really went in detail. I thought you was playing. Uh, no, nah, I, I, I posted pictures. Because, you know, somebody referred me to go to this mechanic. Yeah, I yeah. posted pictures. I posted pictures and videos of my car acting a plum fool. Uh, and, you know, I was going through them little country towns. I'm so happy I didn't get pulled over because it got to the point they had to do some rewiring. But I don't know. I guess they rewired something wrong. Like, my interior lights was, like, blinking off and on while I was driving. And it was pitch black outside. And my, my interior lights was just blinking off and on. Uh, turn signals wasn't working. Man, it was, it was a mess, dog. Man, that's <laughs> crazy. It was a mess. Well, were they black on? No, they ain't black. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. We can't, still can't supremely black. Yeah, can't, can't, <laughs> we still supremely black. Can't, can't, can't hold that ear. But no, uh, yeah. yeah. Nah, they, nah, they wouldn't. Okay. But yeah, this, as you can see, this is your boy D-Rose, man. It's been, a, it's been a great week. Uh, it was capped off with me and Spears. We went to Tyler, Texas for this roundtable discussion and had a very, very powerful meeting uh, with some very – very, very intelligent and intentional people in Tyler, Texas that are doing some bigger things. Uh, actually turned out so well that they're actually willing to either come to like Dallas or Houston to have the sound, same round table. It's really about the self annihilation of black men, but also it's just more important of having those conversations and putting together a plan together that is useful for our community within this time, not just being stuck into like the whole traditional way of going about approaching stuff. So that was dope. Had a great weekend. Uh, shout out to my run group, ZFT. Uh, they had like a reunion. Our uh, Dallas chapter came down and ran with them. It was very huge. We had a pretty good little link up afterwards, uh, practice social distancing. So it was uh, it was pretty good to see a bunch of black people uh, running together, being healthy, uh, taking uh, taking that, that stand. So it's been a great week. No complaints at all. What about you, Spirit? Uh shoot, my my week has been 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 pretty pretty eventful, I shall I say. So uh like you said, uh great conversation, our second time going down, uh talking to uh the people in Tyler and meeting up with them and you know, just having that wonderful conversation and dialogue with them and you know, like you said, intentional and making things happen. I am looking forward to our September September conversation where we're able to take over it and do a little bit more things as far as actually getting a plan together and trying to create a black coalition to where we have one agenda versus a whole bunch of different agendas and we go in separate ways where we could be on one accord with one plan but do things intentional for not just our community but all black communities throughout America. So that was a dope little thing in it. I know that was only our second one, but it seems like it's getting better and better each time. 
And then, like you said, uh, meeting up with the ZFT crew and just having a blast, you know, with, with black people having fun, no issues, no problems, just nice vibes and chilling and kicking it. You know, uh, we, we had a blast, my brother. We had a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then uh, this week, go to work Monday, I'm about to beat up my boss. So <laughs> about to beat up my boss. <laughs> he said some crazy stuff. I had to let him know if it wasn't for my boy, my uh, boy Rashad, my coworker, he would have got slid that night, that day. He would have got dropped. So I started a new job the very next day. So I'm at a new job or whatever. So I mean, all is well on this end, but a very eventful week. So that's what it was for me. <laughs> for a great week to walk in here ready to just lose it all, just risk it all at the job. <laughs> <laughs> to be like that sometimes. <laughs> went from this nice, went from this nice positive eventful weekend yeah. to hey, my boss almost got sleep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty normal. Pretty normal. <laughs> my, my coworker told me he was like, "You, you right? You ain't never gonna change." He was like, "You are who you are." He was like, "Uh." He was like, I'd be listening to the podcast and you'd be saying some deep stuff, but then you always talk about how you don't deal with disrespect. He was like, that ain't never going to change. Yeah, he was like, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not the uh, turn the turn the good shoulder guy. <laughs> that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't him. Yeah, but that's what's up. So we'll get into our uh, first topic. And I know it's, it's been buzzing around. The scene, everybody wants to talk about it, so of course we just have to address it. We won't use any just particular song, of course we'll go into it, but the double standard in music, like what are you all's thoughts on it? Like, why are men allowed to say certain things, but if women take the same approach, it's frowned upon. What's you all's thoughts on it? No, time out. I think we should be intentional and talk about the song that caused all the ruckus. Yeah, but it's plenty of songs out there. So I, I just look at the double standard that people don't want to know that the double standard that people push because I'm not personally offended by the WAP song. So it, mm -hmm. and for me, yeah, me listening to it wouldn't have made me address it any different besides we want to hear y'all opinions. So everybody's asked, like, are y'all going to discuss it? So yeah. But yeah. What you got to say, Flake? Opinion is. Uh my opinion is, I don't know what these niggas, I don't know what these dudes' problem is. Because I see a lot, of, I see more men going in about the song than women is. And that's why I'm confused at. Because I grew up in an era where uh, Snoop said, bitches ain't, tr hey, bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. And Three Six Mafia told me I should get my nuts lit and my ass ate when I was in like sixth grade. So <laughs> when nobody, when nobody talking about that, Everybody thought it was funny when Pimp C said, I love it when she bent that ass over and see that hairy asshole. Like, everybody thought that was funny. Everybody loved the Pimp C quotes. R.P. Pimp C, he one of the greatest rappers of all time. But that man was straight nasty. Um, and anybody, well, it might have been something said, but didn't any fellas have any problem with it? You know, and I don't have a problem with women expressing themselves as much as we have as much as men have disrespected women in song. Uh, and if they want to talk about what they want to do with their bodies, hell, to me, you need to take a pen out and, you know, you need to take notes. Because they telling you some secrets on how to satisfy them. You know what I'm saying? You might, you might want to take some notes. And if you ask me, I mean, if we want to talk about the song WAP, I mean, WAP has put 7.8 billion people give or take on this planet. So uh, I appreciate Carter B and Megan Stallion for giving WAP. Uh, that, that with ass pee, uh, with it deserved, you know what I'm saying? It, it need to be talked about. <laughs> I will parents, say this real quick. Parents, yeah. Not all seven million people came from some wop. <laughs> some of that was some dap, some dry ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some test tube babies. You can't forget about them either. Yeah. But uh, they forget about Lil' Kim. We had Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown, all them talking about that. And be honest with you, the city girls have said worse than that. However, they just not as popular as Cardi B is. You know, but I, I don't understand it. I mean, I hadn't seen a song yet. I got three dollars. I ain't seen a song yet. I don't think it's going to be a song created because I'm in their lives and talking to them and teaching them. 
that they gonna hear it, then all of a sudden they gonna bust it open and go strip and off one song. Like if they start to do that, that's because they want to do it. <laughs> they don't song do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really my thoughts on it too. Um, I don't think it's just they people over over overreacting to it. Honestly, I don't feel that they said anything that was um, extremely disrespectful. Especially if you're over the age of eighteen, it's just a form of expression. If that's how you want to categorize what you have as a woman, or if a man have you want to get to get to it, by all means, you have a freedom of speech. Say what you want to say on the song. However, for people to say. Uh, should what about the kids that are listening well as parents the kids should be listening so that's that's upon you all to kind of stop there from being accessible to them the best way that you can but it's like flake to flake point if they hear one song and then just jump off the deep end and say cardi b and made the stallion was the reason why they started doing what they were doing we didn't have them back in the day and they were doing it at 12 and 13 and 14 so that's just life uh so i don't i didn't take any offense by it now is it Explicit, absolutely, very vulgar. Like you know exactly what they own, so that's just what they let you know. So I don't, I'm not tripping about it. And Pimp C D used to be out the chain back in the day because I heard some of his music. <clears throat> and um, it was an older song. Like my homegirl had uh, told me about them older women that used to talk about, uh, like the, back in the old days, talking about uh, sex on the song. Bro, they was being very. <laughs> Very, very, like made a statement. Ain't talking about nothing, basically. If you hear some of the old old school music, no one was saying what they want to say. Yeah. What was your thoughts, though, Spirit? I know you've chimed in a lot, but I'm in agreement with both of y'all. So I mean, there ain't nothing that offended me about it. And again, like you said, if if people are complaining about children listening to it, then they need to complain about their parenting skills or their aunt skills, uncle skills, or whatever skills that they have, mentorship skills or whatever, because children shouldn't be listening to that. There's a time and a place for everything, and some things are intended for adults, and some things are not intended for kids. And so, therefore, everybody knows that that song is not intended for kids, so why are you allowing your kids to listen to it? Secondly, uh, secondly my thing is, like I said this weekend, everybody need a little while. It, everybody need a little whop in their life. So, I mean, I'm not mad at it. So, uh, 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 make another song. Make a whop, too. Shit. <laughs> I really don't care. Yeah. But uh, also, the other part of it is all these people complaining, they got to remember where they came from. A lot of these people came from uh, Kappa Beach Party, uh, Freak Nick in Atlanta, like, Y'all was y'all was getting it in back in them days too, and doing some things. And then even if you want to go old school with it, you know, some of your favorite artists was a little nasty and freaky as well, and talked about some things. They just did it in a more sultry and uh, indirect manner. But if you realize what they was talking about, them lyrics was talking about getting down and getting busy. So you cannot have double standards or be a hypocrite when you jam something or when you bump something and it's not saying it the way that today's people are saying it, that it, oh, you complaining about it because y'all talk about the same thing. So again, to me, it's artistic expression and you cannot bottle or coddle somebody's artistic, artistic expression if that's how they choose to use it. So I'm with it. Yeah, and, and for those, you know, this is what I want people to do too. You talk about how bad this song is and be mad about it. Won't you champion the ladies out there that's talking about something? Like you get a new artist named uh, Chica. Ain't nobody. I had to. I had to stumble her myself. I ain't. Did nobody tell me about her? Ain't nobody champion that person. Uh, Rhapsody, who is to me is out today, one of the top five I and mean, one of the top ten, if not top five, best rappers out here right now. Rhapsody get on the song with anybody and, and give them a business and really got a message in her song. Like she had a whole album that was named after powerful black women. Every song was named after powerful black women. I ain't hear too many people champion her. So if you want those like songs like Wop Out The Way, then let's champion these other female artists that are out there doing something. I think most people just mad because these females are slick taking over when it comes to this music industry. Because they taking over an R&B right now. 
they sleep taking over the rap game with what Megan and, and Cardi is doing. And then once Nicki dropped, there's going to be another one. Ain't too many fellas selling as many records right now as the women are. So, you know, I think it's a little bit of jealousy also. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I kind of felt like. Um, it's that it's a double standard, but it's also just like that feeling that <clears throat> men should always be celebrated more for their acts in whatever retrospect. And I just don't agree with that. So if that's how they're going to keep their uh, music going, or if that's how they want to, like I said, if that's how you want to express yourself, express yourself. Like it's some slick hating going on with the fellas because it's like, bro, we've. We've definitely talked about more in private and then heard some stuff on songs is, come on, bro, i just be honest. The only thing they did was, we, what we'll talk about at the barbershop or just with the fellas, they put it on the song and, and they just aired out the girl talk and everybody listened to it and it happens to be to a melody. Big deal. Thanks. That's it, like everybody talks about it. They just decided to put a song and a video with it that had everybody turn their head, but uh, to me, I'm and they could shake a little something with it too. But I was, I'm still taking tip drill over there. Like I'm still going tip drill with the bad. Oh, bad oh I, ain't and all that. Yeah. I ain't mad at it. Yeah. Yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, nah. That joint ain't better than tip drill though. Yeah, that joint ain't better than juvenile back to ass so people. Yeah, none of that. So I'm like, like nah. just bumping though. But. Yeah, it's bumping, but it's not. Nah, nah, not that. So I was like, nah. I grew up on the. You had to stay up at two o'clock to watch that BT uncut. Wop ain't touching that. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Where was all this fuss saying BT uncut was out? Right. BT they was watching it. They were sneaking. They were sneaking and watching it. Boy, BT I, had a whole song. BT uncut had a whole song to my Tell me what that thing smell like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I ain't, I ain't never flipped the TV so fast when I was trying to watch it on in my grandma's house. What? Do you know what you watching? Nah, I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's yeah, it. Let's not forget about BT uncut. Right. That's it. Right? Anybody else got anything to talk about with the uh, double standard? Besides, people need to get out their damn feathers and let these women be women, let these men be it, it ain't. It's art. If you don't agree, you don't agree. It, ain't, it ain't that deep, man. Yeah. And, and you, have the, you have the choice to listen to what you want to listen to. So don't listen to it if you're going to complain. Like, turn that shit off. You do not have to listen to it when it comes on the radio. You could switch stations. You could turn it off. You could put it on whatever you want to. Like, so, I mean, let, let that shit go. Ain't that deep, y'all. Well, the, ne the next thing on the agenda is uh, we have our first black uh, VP uh, running for office right now. That's Ms. First female. Kamala Harris. Yeah, first female, first black. Ms. Kamala Harris. So congratulations to her, and I'm glad they knew who to pick. Uh, even though I kind of been knowing this for a while, that she was gonna be, you know, I figured they was gonna go that route because he was, because she was giving them the business in them debates. So I figured they probably was gonna go that route. Um, my question to you guys is, what's your thoughts on it? We had the black community is going back and forth. It seems like about seventy percent is for, other thirty percent is giving her the business. Online. Uh, so, what do you guys think? Think about this. You could go, Rose. Yeah. So, with this one, first and foremost, I think it should be celebrated because that is uh, it's, it's history. So, however people want to look at it, before we kind of go into what's the positives, what's the negatives, that type of thing. Uh, for me, I'm I'm going to judge her just like I would look at any other politician. It's definitely about what you get in and what you actually do. All the talk is cool, but we'll be looking at the stats to see exactly what. It's going to occur while you're, if you all are appointed to be in office, what are you actually gonna be doing for the communities that you're gonna be representing and are you gonna hold truth to what you said you were going to do? So that's gonna be my thing with that. So overall, I'm glad that she got the opportunity. We've yet to see what she's gonna do. Now for the people that are being ignorant enough to go back and forth about whatever her ethnicity is, how she's trying to break it down, like however 
she classified herself like, please just get facts. Like people aren't running around here with birth certificates immediately just because she's somebody that's running for, like, come on dog. Like we have to do better than that and black people and saying like, the moment we get a little bit of consistency in regards to what we say we want, we're still so quick to turn, turn it, tear it down. So that's why people aren't so, they can tell us anything and do anything because again, like we've talked about before, and not everyone, but that 30% is just what you're always there for. You critique, 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 but you have no plan at all. So if she was not running, it would still be the same argument was, are they grading the black women or the black people that are trying to run for VP or the women too hard? Now that she gets it is, oh, she's not black enough. What is it gonna be? I mean, I, I don't get it. So that part is ignorant. Salute to her. And also another thing, it's gonna be a lot of pink and green around if they <laughs> if they get in the office, because the AKAs is definitely ready. So <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yep. So, and it should be celebrated and uh, quit trying to find reasons to not celebrate history, especially when it could possibly be on our side. That's it. What you got, Spears? Spears? Uh, for me, I just wish, I wish people would respect and accept excellence when it happens and appreciate the steps that we have taken, actually the leaps and bounds that we are taking in order to be in a position that we're in right now. Nobody's perfect. Me, you, Flake, nobody is perfect. The people hate not perfect. The people running not perfect. Nobody's perfect but this is something that is unprecedented in today's time and era. And so therefore we should appreciate it. And if there is something that we feel like our sister is falling short on, we go to her and say, can you do this for us? This is what we want. We come with a plan versus complaints. We say we need this versus saying you ain't shit. And so therefore I think that we just got to stop hating and finding faults and flaws in everybody and just realize that, you know, th this is this is greatness right here. And again, there ain't too many people who are putting themselves on the front line in this certain aspect and going up against the the majority and holding them accountable, saying this is what we need or this is what we want to do, and this aspect of life so whether it's a black woman black man whether it's a a latino person wh whatever it is we should appreciate the greatness and appreciate the person that we have trying to do something for us and also regardless if they fall short at a time or whatever this will be the first black female vice president regardless so even if she don't do what you want her to do that in itself is something to be celebrated. So we need to celebrate the greatness versus always trying to find hate and trying to find a reason why not to vote or why not to like this or why not to commend this or whatever the case may be. And that's all I got to say about it. And, and I, just to kind of piggyback off of something that you had said in regards to celebrating it for what it is, because I think the history should be celebrated because it is. However, I think people are so focused on now of what the outcome is going to be or what her past things has been. There's not any elected official that has done politics that is ever going to have a clean black background that's going to have you thinking that they're going to be all for one particular group of people. It's just not going to happen. So there could be some things that you look into it because I've started to research a little bit that could be questionable, but at the end of the day, none of them are going to be perfect. So just like get off of that. Accept it for what it is and keep pressing forward. Yeah, I'm a, uh, and one thing for sure for you two woke people, you know, sometimes when people say they, they so awake and so woke, sometimes you can be there where you need a nap, man, because you rest, you're tired, you ain't thinking right, you ain't ate a Snickers that day, you hungry, like something going on. Because I'm telling I got in a full fledged argument with somebody talking about that birth certificate. I was like, bro, so you think, 
So you think her birth certificate just float? Her real birth certificate just floating around online? You you just go get somebody birth certificate online just anywhere. This this is what we doing now. This this how we doing it. They, they did the same thing with Barack Obama. You remember with him? They was talking about his birth certificate. He wasn't born in the United States. This, they did the same thing. So you tell me Barack Obama real birth certificate just floating around out here? That he was born in Kenya, where it was trying to say he was born at. Like, come on, y'all. Like, we gotta start doing this fact check. You know, I told one person, I said, I said, you're going harder on her than you are any other white person that's going. I said, you're going so hard on her and you're expecting her to be perfect. Why, why, when we dealing with our own people, we gotta be perfect? They go when we get somebody running for office. They go for when we dealing with a black business. They go for when you got somebody over your house as a black person supposed to be fixing something at your house or working on your car. They got to be perfect 24-7. And if they ain't, we ain't coming back. Man, we got to get off that shit. Like, for real. We got to get off that shit. Like, they, they talking about, you know, they talking about stuff that happened when she wasn't even in office. They saying, hey, this one guy, they wouldn't overturn. She wouldn't overturn uh, his case due to new evidence found. Well, she wasn't even a DA at the time. So what y'all talking about? She wasn't even the DA. They talking about how many black people she locked up. Oh, she locked up so many black people in California due to this, due, due, due to that. I said, do you realize when she was a DA that small possession of weed didn't even make it to court? Like you paid a fine and went on your way and then other weed possessions, she reduced them from felonies down to misdemeanors for these people. Also, she got a program for when people got out of jail. So for those who were felonies or whatever, set up a whole new program for them to be able to get out of jail, a work release program for them so they can get right back into society and find jobs. Like, don't nobody talk about that. Like, you want to roll with what you say on the internet. When I asked you to bring a case up to me, then you came back it up with a fact. I had one guy come to me to my, well, she had this one case where they had this false evidence or whatever, and she didn't overturn it. I said, hold on. There was one bad person they had working in that office. Well, she found out about it and did her own investigation. She overturned it. And she overturned that case and overturned another, I want to say, 200, almost 300 cases due to that bad person working in the office. I said, but y'all don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about she ain't black enough and just scream out that she locked up so many people. Oh, and the next one, they want to fuss about. Oh, what about she said, if your kid don't go to school, they gonna lock them up. Well, do your research. How many people got locked up for that? Not one person. And she even said, I was just trying to scare parents into bringing their kids to school because so many kids was missing school. She said, but I didn't lock up one person. We didn't go after one person at all. So I want people to realize when you talk about her, just come with it with the facts. When you talk about any of these candidates, come with it with the facts. They'll go on Facebook, or Instagram, these commercials, because when they do them politician commercials, they be lying in too. So we in this easy place right now where information is in your hand. Like when I grew up, you had to go read the encyclopedia if you want to learn some information. Encyclopedia came out every year. So it might be a year or two before you find out the truth. Now we got Google. You walk around with a encyclopedia in your hand, you got Google. If you don't believe Google, how about you deep dive some more and do some more research? You know, you got a hundred websites you can go do research on. Just do it. Folks are being lazy. We need to quit being lazy as hell. Yeah. I, I want to add one more thing, too, that uh, you forgot to mention about her. The thing with the prostitutes, she didn't, the uh, young prostitutes, she didn't put them in jail. She got them therapy and mental helps because they was victimized for the most part, and that's why they was doing the prostitution at a young age or whatever. And so she didn't put them in jail or, you know, throw throw them away and say good riddance with them. She actually got them mental help to, to help deal with their physical and psychological issues that they went through when they was victimized or raped or whatever the case may be that got them out on the street. So I just wanted to add that to it. Yeah, um, and I think it's really coming down to like two things, like, her dad is Jamaican, her mom's Indian. Like, I, I know if people have never met a Jamaican, they look pretty black to me. Uh, black. Yeah, and Indians are very much so just as black. So I don't really understand that argument. Uh, and I really think it comes from her husband being white. I think that's why people give him so much uh, flat. Uh, but again, it goes in their favor. Everybody's all for it. Then we get it in our face. We find every reason to tear it down. So. 
Just, just like you said, just get out hey. the facts. But she has a Jamaican daddy, and I don't see too many light skinned Jamaican people. And um, hey, no. unless they bleaching, we went right? To, exactly. Like so, when we went to Jamaica, they tried to keep me. Now they was like, "Hey." We thought you was Jamaican until you started talking. I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, D-Rose, if, if they don't think Jamaica's black, they need to meet Delroy, man. <laughs> what? Hey, 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 hey. If you, hey, you, you go to Jamaica you and ask for Delroy. Yeah, if you're not a real one, you might not make it back on that trip. Delroy might hide you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Delroy's about that business. <laughs> Delroy about all the good black yeah. business, dog. Yeah. Yeah, so y'all got anything else to touch on with that subject or whatnot? Shout out, uh, well, congrat- congratulations on the um, on her being the could potentially be the first black vice president and woman as well. So hopefully, it does turn. She, uh, she gets that opportunity. She might be the first female president. Be real. That's what it looks like. I think that's what they're scared of. So I'm telling me. I'm telling me Joe Biden might be year two or three and might be like, hey, you know what? I'm quitting. <laughs> I could definitely see it. I, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to it, but what I will say is we're going to speak that into existence. So shout out to the first female black vice president of the United States of America. Congratulations. And we wish you nothing but the best but we do want to hold you accountable to your actions. So we're not hating on you. We're not, we not rooting against you. We're supporting you. We love you. But we also want you to do the very best that you can do for us because we need it. So shout out to you, sister. And she an AKA. But anyway, that's, that's Mo Black. She Black. Anyway, but right. uh, our next and, topic. And if, oh, go ahead. Before go we ahead. go to that, if, if anybody got anything to say, she got a Twitter page. I mean, if you want your demands hurt, Man, inbox her. I mean, that's the best chance you got to beat your voice being heard. If they have the connection with her, send her a message. Add her, inbox her, whatever you got to do, try to get her attention. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's move on to the next topic. So for our next topic, uh, there's been a couple of times on our podcast that we talked about murders by police officers. And most of the time they're done to black innocent people man and woman and children alike but this time we're going to address officer badge number 10282 in phoenix arizona where he shot an innocent white man named mr ryan whitaker rest in peace king and so for us being supremely black when we say that we're all about our black culture and heritage but we are not opposed to anybody else's and we have to intentionally speak out against all injustice to anybody across the line whether you're black white purple green blue red whatever color you are we have to speak against injustices anywhere so if y'all do not know about this story i will ask y'all to research it because this was a travesty in itself and the police officer badge 10282 has not been arrested so we are calling for him to be arrested, just like we're calling for the officers of Breonna Taylor to be arrested, just like we're calling for the officers that killed George Floyd to be arrested, just like we're calling still for Zimmerman to be arrested and the officer who killed Mike Brown and all these other officers. We're, we want due diligence done to anybody who was wrongfully murdered or killed by police officers. And so, fellas, I know I watched the video. I don't know if y'all seen the video or whatever, but if y'all have anything to add or chime in, just join in and uh, speak your heart. Yeah, for this one, I know we had kind of talked about it uh, before we had took the week off to kind of get into the, the visual space. But um, I looked at the video briefly. I had, like I was telling you, I got away from really watching those videos because We've normalized that so much, it, like you don't even, you, you're numb to it. So I, I try not to even watch it. I remember when I used to first start seeing police brutality really being just showed to us, it would bring a tear to your eye. Now it's almost, you go through it like it's a movie, not realizing that this is really somebody's life and somebody's really losing a brother, uh, you know, a son, a father, uncle, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it, it's, no matter the race, it's just, 
crazy that these people are still using the same old catchphrase at this point is, I was in fear for my life. Well, why are you a police officer? Um, how do you think we feel that we, since a lot of us have gotten killed? So at this point, it's like, what do you want from us? We, if any contact, any color comes to you and you feel threatened at any point, your number one objective is to kill. Like the dude shot him from behind. It wasn't even the person he was going towards. So it's like, what makes you that nervous that he's not even coming? He wouldn't even come to you. So it's like, how about tase him? How about hit him with a club to knock him down? How about just tripping him? How about just throwing hands? What did you? What, what did they just get off with their automatic way to neutralize a threat is to put four bullets in somebody from behind because you fear for your life or the other officer's life, but he didn't enough to pull the trigger. It just, and it's the same old sad song, same old excuses. I fear for my life. Well, me too. I'm black in America. That's every day. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't, I don't get it. I still don't. It's, it's sad. So definitely uh, rest in peace. I do hope that justice is served. And I really wish that as these things continue to happen, because we're addressing this again, seems like it's like every other episode we're talking about it. Uh, they really need to look into their training. And I, this is why I agree with defunding the police, because we need to take away some of that extra money and start making sure that when the budget gets tighter, you're going to make sure you're getting the right people in those seats, because when those lawsuits and things like that come in for people acting outside of the code that they're supposed to hold, then you'll start to see different. But when they're not impacted financially, nothing's going to change, because it's clear that we see officers in blue, for the most part, don't value other people's lives if they fear, if they in fear for their life. They just don't. And that's what the words they're going to say every time. I'm in fear for my life, so let me kill somebody. That's it. Yeah, I don't know how long you can keep saying the same thing and it keep working. Like, that shit getting out of hand. It's really getting out of hand that that same excuse can work. I was fearing for my life. Well, hell, it's, it's crazy to me that we have to keep myself at a better standard than the people that's trained to de-escalate issues. Like I should be, I should be the person that know all the rules to keep you from killing me, even though you are the one who went through six weeks of training or 12 weeks, whatever it is, that short amount of training to have somebody's life in your hand. You understand? Know I really don't understand that. Um, rest in peace to that young man. Uh, and blessings to his condolences to his family and his girlfriend that was there that went unarmed. I, I top you up on one D Rose. Uh, what happened to back in the day when he used to train? That was his wife. Though. That was his wife. I oh, was his wife. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Condolences to the wife. I'm sorry about that. Um, what happened to the training that they used to have where he used to train and shoot him in the leg? What, what happened to that? Now that used to be a part of the protocol where they would shoot you in the leg or something like that. To, to keep you away, but like you said, he was walking away from him, and you shot him in the back. You can see both arms. So when he went down to kneel, you can see that he wasn't pulling his gun up. He was pulling his gun. He was putting his gun down, and you still shot that man. And that one time, did he raise his arm up? Now, did he walk out aggressive? Yes, because he said, I didn't know who was at the door, so yeah, I'm going to walk out aggressive. But once he seen who it was, he backed it, he took a step back and started going down and on the way down, this police officer shot. Need to be arrested. Like you, we can't. Just need we we can't keep going through this. As, as we got to do better with our police officers. And and I had an argument with somebody. We talking about some well, just a few bad apples. Well, motherfucker, Delta Airlines got a few bad pilots, and they got one hundred fifty thousand flights per year, and fifteen hundred of them crash and everybody die. Yeah, damn, I'm not flying Delta Airlines. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Delta Airlines can't afford to have a few bad apples. Uber can't afford to have a few bad apples. McDonald's can't afford to have a few bad apples that, that's dropping your hamburgers on the floor. Why is it with police officers we accept a few bad apples? But we don't accept a few bad apples anywhere else. Yeah, somebody had sent me a tweet uh, that was a little humor to it, but it's the truth. I was like, why do, why do you go to a Chick-fil-A and you never receive bad customer service? Is it, and they were comparing it to like cop killing. They was like, because we get fired if we don't provide it. However, we have people that are in protection of our law and life 
that's immediately the first thing we're doing. And we actually have to be more trained, like to Flake's point, than they are. Like, so we're supposed to be more trained than you all are on how to deal with the escalated situation. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. And, uh, shoot. If I could share the conversation that we had on the way to Tyler, that's cool. Rose? What conversation? About cops. If a cop just let off. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. That's, because no, that's me, me and Rose was riding a Tyler and we was talking and we, we was talking about just police brutality and, and the mishandling of police officers. And we was like, we're at a point now in our lives, like if a police officer shoot at us, we were turning fire because why are we just supposed to say, raise our hands and say, no officer, don't shoot me. And nine times out of 10, if God don't say the same, we're going to be dead because they aiming to kill and they trying to shoot us. So we say we firing back before we ask questions, before whatever, because we don't care about their lives, them thinking their lives mean more than our lives because they don't. We're a man just like they a man or we're a woman just like they a woman. So therefore, if an officer come at us off of some BS trying to take our lives, we're going to return the same effect to them because at the end of the day, we trying to get up out of there and we trying to live. So therefore, we at a point where we're not just going to sit back and allow. Now, of course, we're going to be mindful and not ignorant and just saying we just firing off at officers. That's not what we're saying at all. However, if an officer does just come at us and fire at us or whatnot or tries to do things to, to us or whatever that puts our lives in danger, we're, we're willing to fight for our lives. And that's just the point that we're at right now as being individuals, me and Rose. Yeah, and it's, and it's sad because I've had this conversation with several people, but we shouldn't even have to think about that, man. It could be just a simple stop. You got your ticket, you're moving on. But it's just it's the smallest infractions. You didn't put your blink on leads to people getting killed or you get out of your car and you run. Whatever you're running for, if they're running from you, they're not a threat. It's just it's, it's sad that you wouldn't even have to think if they happen to shoot at me and do not hit me and kill me and harm me, that I'm returning fire. But you shouldn't look at it any different anyway because – you're just at your job and you just happen to want to handle the situation this way. I have not shot at you and it's how everybody's going to start feeling. So then now you get to a point where it's the wild, wild west with the police. And if they don't get a hand on it, people aren't going to be stopping. And then the moment you show me any aggression, then now you're going to start to see a lot more of them get caught in situations. And I personally don't want it to go there because one, I have some friends that are police officers and I don't want them to lose their life. I was somebody thinking that they're going, they're going to try to take, their life from them, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it could be fixed, but are you all gonna be proactive and get it taken care of instead of this, just letting it go as if, oh, well, it's just a few here, it's a few there. Like, you can't keep doing that. Like, you just can't. It's gonna get dangerous eventually. Yeah, like I said in previous episodes, the, 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 cop, the good cops ought to start letting the bad cops be known, because they putting your life in danger. Like, you a good cop out here, you doing what you supposed to do, but the bad cops is putting your life in danger because they're making everybody else scared of them, you know. But let's wrap it up on net. It's about to be our time, fellas. We got us. Do we have a uh, uh, a black business minute? Yes, sir. We have two black business minutes actually. So the first one is Cafe right. Mari J. She's uh, a caterer out of Houston, Texas. Uh, if you want to follow her, she's on Cafe Mari J. C A F E M A R I J A I on Instagram and Facebook. And you can place your orders on there. You can see her meals and what she's offering or whatnot. And again, she uh she makes good food. I see nothing but great reviews from her, black owned caterer out here in the Houston, Texas area. The second one is the true products. Uh on you can catch them on the website, the true products.com spelled exactly how it sounds the true products.com uh at true laundry company we believe that quality exceeds value a company is only as good as its promise it keeps true they promise the quality of their products will always exceed the value they promise to be committed to their community therefore it is the mission of true products to build a company that will become an institution that will provide opportunity and benefits for generations to come they were established in November 2012, True Products is a startup manufacturing and distribution company that specialties 
specializes in household cleaning supplies. True Products has over 25 distributors and currently does business in over 18 states throughout the country. True Products has positioned itself as an international premier provider for household cleaning products, utilizing a unique approach to providing affordable quality products and excellent customer service for the consumers, retail outlets, and government agencies. True Products is an American-based, veteran-owned corporation headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's Black-owned as well. So if you need some laundry detergent or other cleaning supplies, you might want to check trueproducts.com to get your new stuff. And that's it for the Black Business Minute. That's some great stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Our supremely black person of the week is, we already talked about, Kamala Harris. No doubt, hands down, you know there's going to be the supremely black person of the week. I ain't got to go into detail about it. We already discussed it. If you got any questions, any concerns about it, go out there. Do your Googles. Do your research. Ask.com, Siri, whoever you get. Go ask. Do your own research. Quit taking these snippets, these 30 seconds, 30 second snippets and saying, oh, this is how she feel about reparations. Oh, this is how she feel about that. No, listen to the whole interview. Listen to the whole interview. Did she smoke weed in college? Yes. Did she listen to Snoop Dogg and Tupac? Yes. <laughs> Look, oh, man, just do your research. <laughs> do, do your research. Was she, was she raised in Oakland? Yes. Yeah, born in Oakland. Born, for those who say she ain't African American, she's Jamaican African American. <laughs> she was born in Oakland. I mean, I don't know what to tell y'all. But, you know, you know, I don't know. She answered the question why she married to a white man. She said, at all, she only been married for like five years. She said, just this is who I fell in love with. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, some of y'all women would take that if you ain't never been married to 50 people. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all gonna take Bradley. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, that's why I said they, they better be careful what they wish for because she got some status and she <laughs> took her a minute, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So. It is what it is. So, uh, uh, but yeah, and shout out to Carter B, Meg the Stag. Shout out to Carter B just becoming, coming from a, a strip club, being broke, to where she at now. And she doing interviews with Bernie Sanders. And she doing interviews with the next president, I'm going to call it, with the next president as well. And she putting up political views out there. So shout out to her. Shout out to Meg, who's a hard working woman. Been working since she was 15, 16 years old paid her way through the rap game uh, through the state of Texas as well. So shout out to them. Fire y'all haters. Man, get some beer. We're about to wrap this thing up. Uh, Follow my queens out there. Put your crown on. Tilt that thing to the side. Let them know you are a queen. Follow my kings out there. If you can read that shirt, the original kings. Put your crown on. Tilt that thing to the side. Let them know you are a king. This is our first visual season two. We are supremely black and we are. Yes, sir.